so this is inspired by Braun, the Braun dial. So that's decades, you know, that's, like, that's from Carlos, he's, 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 he's design inspiration. This specifically is mimicking, inspired by the Braun dial. So this is the meticulous, um, it's a robotic lever machine. So we sort of took the idea of, you know, the great espressos that you can create manually with the machine, but wanted to automate it, create consistency, um, and, and formulate something that was a little bit more design oriented. It didn't look like a traditional boiler box with a frame around it, right? So this machine, um, very design forward. Um, we've got uh, a brew chamber here that's heated. Piston, motor and a piston, integrated tenth of a gram scale, um, normal 58 millimeter porter filter. Um, very simple to control either manually through this dial or via Wi Fi connection uh, to sort of our like um, app or pro software. So you can really manipulate flow, pressure, time, weight, etc. Um, yeah, so basically what I've done already um, in this setup, we've added water to the chamber. The final, um, you hit start. <laughs> uh, the final. The chamber sealed or is it? Chamber is not, so it's got an opening at the top. So you guys can come in and take a look. But you fill it up. This will heat to whatever your target temperature is. Our final um, production model will have a magnetic cover that will kind of top, top it off so it heats a little faster. It'll slide along the top here so you'll be able to manipulate that. Um, but it'll take it to you, whatever your target temp is, I put this at 90 degrees Celsius. Um, and then at that point, it'll initiate um, the piston. So it'll raise it and start dropping it to create pre-infusion and cool flow. How long does that take? You know, it depends on a few things. So this water is sort of not heated, you know, kind of ambient. Um, right now, as this is, the, this is probably the slowest that you'll observe, just simply because we don't have the cover, it's not the 150 mil. But as we've been pulling shots, it's pretty quick. It's not like something that you're, you know, at home you're not really worried about like high pace volume anyway. No, of course, I don't. Um, but it can take a while. I mean, it can take a few minutes if it's like room temp water or cool water. Um, but we'll, we'll make some improvements to the chamber and the cover that it'll like, I think the prototype cover that we have right now, the baristas are like struggling. They, they're basically like prepping first, locking in, and then heating. But it's, it's moving pretty quickly. Um, but it does take some time. We will have like a whole temp feature where, let's say you're home, you want to set it at 90, you just fill it up, it'll hold it at 90, and then you can come back and do your thing and hit so go. So is this going to trigger cool. once you hit the target temp? Exactly. Okay. So this prototype is started by once the brew chamber hits the target temperature. There's 12 sensors in this chamber that all kind of work together to uh, measure the temperature um, as well as sort of the movement of piston resistance, etc. Um, Will that cover um, the steam, the condensation from kind of building up? Yeah. That, yep. gotcha. So as you can notice, we're developing some steam, very precarious around a button like this. So we <laughs> thought about maybe moving that. So TBD there. Um, but yes, the cover is meant to do a couple things. Help insulate yeah. and also cut back on the condensation. So we're at 87.4. After the hard reset, um, the app pretty straightforward. Temperature, um, you've got your pre-infusion mils per second over time, and then in blue you've got your full flow. That's bars over time. So you can kind of create the curves. You can do a really low, slow pre-infusion if you want to do a cold espresso, that kind of thing. Um, you'll be able to do blooming espresso. Um, Probably everything the decent does. We'll, we'll still have some salts for that, but obviously this is restrained by the amount of water that you're needing. 100, 150 mils for the final production. So where's the flow? Where's it measuring flow? It's measuring. Okay, there we go. Much <laughs> faster. Sorry, the last couple we had some snacks, so I had to do a hard line reset right before. It's because you came in, man. Yeah. So flow is calculated by a couple things. Um, weight, the scale, as well as uh, movement of the piston. It's scale. Yeah, this is integrated, it's a tenth of a gram scale. So you can just like, if this is in your kitchen, and you're weighing out your jalapeno poppers for your air fryer, you can just, you know, literally, it's just a scale. Um, so we can kind of take a look, and again, this is made on the software. It's not like, definitely not fully flushed out and finished. We're gonna polish it up a bit. But you've got your uh, pressure curve, 
So we've got our uh, pre-infusion going into full flow. I set it at nine bars, so you can see that kind of plateau. Um, we've got the weight of the shot as it uh, fills the cup. Um, the flow here, it's a little bit tricky. This first initial big spike is like the piston initially contacting and pressing down. So it's sort of a very accurate image, but it's also not something that's useful because it's just the mechanics of that. But what we're really looking for is the four mils per second pre-infusion that I set there. And then the temperature you're always going to see at this current prototype, when it's heating here or in the graph, you're going to see variation in that number because of the, the 12 sensors here, depending on where it is in the chamber, as well as like, you know, as it gets to the top temp, it starts to blow and bubble at the top, that all impacts the sensor temp. So it's averaging all of those. Um, so you'll see that a little bit on the decent as well, other kind of, you know, kind of like move a little bit. So again, those are little UX kind of things that we're uh, kind of flush out a little bit on, on the app. But the really fun thing is, you know, this thing, you know, you're going to be able to share profiles. We're going to be able to literally, um, and this is something, a little fun project I want to do is, um, let's say you took a trip to Paris recently, you had an amazing espresso at a cafe, cafe, Terrace Cafe. Um, we could actually contact them, get their water, send you their coffee, some lotus, some third wave, the mineral, right? Their actual specs of their machine, and you can try to replicate their shots at home. And because of this um, manual pour, you're able to manipulate the water. So for a roaster, you're gonna be able to take your blend, your single origin, run this through here, and maybe you have five different kettles of water that you formulate. So I think there's other applications, not the major applications, outside of home. The home space is really what we're into and excited about, but um, we already have some cafes that have backed it and want to purchase for their cafes to do blooming, cold, extra special dishes, that kind of stuff. Um, but I do think there's probably going to be a space for QC because it's so manipulative. Um, this is the uh, Regalia blend. Uh, this is a little tighter than what they, they pull at the shop, um, but as you can see, it comes out fairly well. Nice grandma consistency. Um, after every shot, you, you purge, and it's basically meant to get the, uh, the water, the excess water out of the chamber, and then you reset. So it's manual from that perspective of you're adding water for every shot. So that's sort of the ritual. That that the... You can. We just kind of do it. Yeah. Um, that to us is sort of the, the, the ritual of it. You know, it's not meant to be a combination of pour over into espresso, but just the lever ritual. Right. And what was the, is that, a, is that a dial on the right? Yep. So for example, um, you'll be able to go in here. Let's say you don't have iPad. Let's say that last shot he pulled was the best shot he's ever tasted in his life. He saves it, right? Um, you'll be able to come in here, select your preset, do you know, prep your puck, add water, but you'll be able to just hit go in the morning. So this is sort of for your your user that still needs to be able to prep the puck, right? It's not fully super automatic by any means. But once you have this locked in, you don't need to you don't need to go full curve. You just hit go. So that's really what that means to be. You can do everything from this style. That's a button right there? This is a manual tear. That's a manual tear. Yeah, so this is like, it's kind of faster than if you put your cup down and you immediately hit that. Yeah. It's a little bit more. But then this is, um, you can remove this tray. Obviously. The one that's on metal? Yeah. Nice. And then this is plastic. Cool. Dude, man. So since it's one way, you're not getting any, you're not back flushing ever. Yeah, right. Um, there is an SOP yet for this, but you probably, this is for like travel and stuff, but. Oh man, that's crazy. That's awesome. Scale goes there, port filter, machine. This is where the mini goes. <laughs> oh, the <Lego. laughs> That's, cool. That's why that thing is amazing because it fits in the corner of this. That's sweet. Um, I even we have a uh, this is for a hydro flask in case I need it to like transport water. <laughs> but luckily, <laughs> every I've done it at all cafes. So. Did you do these cutouts? I didn't do them. I was just gonna say I was like, wow, you really are. The, the team did though. 